What's going on guys, welcome back. So today we're gonna to go ahead and learn how you can deploy a static website on Azure using Azure storage accounts and have it immediately available to everyone on the web. Okay, so let's take a look here. Um, what we see in front of us here is a very basic static website. So we have our index.html, our index.js, and our styles.css. So let's take a look at our index.html over here on the right. So we see we have our HTML, our header, our body, and our HTML. Now we need to add two things here to the head. The first thing is we need to add our script tag and we need to give it our source. And remember our source is just index.js in the same directory, so we can just add it like that. Now we need to add our link to our style sheet. We need to say link uh, rel equals style sheet, and then href is going to be our index, or no, our styles.css. Okay, so now that we have our index.js and our, our style sheet linked, we can go ahead and test to see that this is running. I have Python installed, so I can go ahead and run python -m -http server, and it'll go ahead and run this static website here, and it'll serve up this directory on port 8000. So now I'm gonna go ahead and look at port 8000 here. So I can go to localhost on 8000, and we go ahead and see hello world in blue, and then my JavaScript is simply console logging hello world. So if I go to the console here, I should see hello world, which I did. Okay, so that's good. All right, so now let's go ahead and, and, and get this static website up there on Azure. So now in front of me, what you see here is the Azure portal. In order to get here, we can go to portal.azure.com. And that'll go ahead and bring you over to the Azure website. If you haven't signed up for an account yet, go ahead and sign up for an account. Uh, they give you $200 in free credit, so you can host your website at least for a year, I believe, on that. Um, so now we can go ahead here and get started. It automatically brought me up here uh, because I had, I'm had i already logged in. So now we can go ahead and create a storage account. So I'm going to click on storage accounts. Mine was right there because I recently used it. If you guys have not do not have it there, then on the left here, you can see storage accounts over at below load balancers and above virtual networks here. So you can click that and it'll bring us to the same place here. So let's create a new storage account here and we're going to call it our static site uh, or I'm going to call it YT underscore static site uh, storage account. But first we need to create a resource group. So I'm going to call this YT static site uh, RG. And we need a storage account name. So I'm going to call it YT static site uh, and that we will see if that works and it does and we need a location I'm gonna go ahead and put it in West US 2 now for performance we're gonna go ahead and leave it with standard um, account kind storage v2 general purpose that is the most recent and most recommended choice and then we have replication read access read access geo redundant storage so we don't really need any redundancy here generally speaking if we were deploying this into a production environment we do need redundancy but in our case just for just for example purposes we don't need any kind of redundancy besides locally redundant storage and access tier we're going to leave as hot because this is going to be serving up the website so networking we want to allow public and we want to allow a public endpoint uh, next, we go to advanced, secure transfer is required, that is enabled, uh, large file shares we don't need, blob soft delete we don't need, file share soft delete we don't need, uh, data lake storage gen v2 hierarchical namespace we do not need either, and um, we don't need NFS uh, v3 either. So now tags, normally you'd add some tags, so let's go ahead and add a quick tag here. Um, our tag is just going to be, name is going to be um, price and is going to be static site so what that is going to be is just for calculating prices across all different types of deployed resources in my azure environment i can actually filter by tags so now we'll review and create and then go ahead and hit create here so this will go ahead and deploy the storage account for me so once this is deployed i'm going to go ahead and download the microsoft storage explorer and then i'm going to go ahead and upload my static files to the store using the storage explorer into my storage account and then i can go ahead and create an endpoint for my files in my storage account at which point i'll be able to see my website publicly on azure so let's go ahead now, we can go ahead and go to resource once that's been created. And now I can go ahead and go down here to static website. You'll see that down here in the left in the hamburger menu and click enabled. So now that I have it enabled, our index document name is just gonna be index.html. And we're just gonna save that. 
and now it gives us a primary endpoint here. So now our primary endpoint has been created. It doesn't have a storage container that it's pointing to yet. So let's go ahead and create that now. So now we go ahead here and to containers. And actually, there we go. We do have dollar sign web. So if you, if you didn't enable it when we enabled the static website, it created that dollar sign web for us ahead of time. If you don't have that enabled, you can go ahead and create dollar sign web yourself and then upload your files there as well. So now let's go ahead and upload here. We can use it. We can do it using the storage explorer or we can do it using uh, directly. We can do it directly here through the through this interface. So let's just do it through this interface. And if we select a file here, what I can select is, um, is I can go ahead to the desktop, I can go to uh, YouTube videos raw, and then I can go to static site, at which point I can click index with the Chrome icon, which is replaced, which is placed there for in an HTML document, and then I can go ahead and upload that. So now we have our index.html. Uh, so now let's go ahead and just navigate to our website and see that we can see that. Then we'll upload our JavaScript and CSS file and confirm that those changes are being made as well. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and move back here. I'm going to click above the breadcrumbs below. Uh, we'll back, go back and go to resource. Now we can go back down below here to static website on the left. And then I can copy this endpoint by clicking that little twice file looking icon on the right. And then I can go and create a new tab paste that in and then I get hello world as my text from that website so my website has been successfully deployed so now let's go ahead and create or let's go ahead and try to um, upload the JavaScript and the CSS so we can see that that's working as well so now we can go ahead and upload a file and we're gonna go ahead and grab the CSS and upload that and then we're gonna go ahead and upload the JavaScript as well All right, and now we're going to go ahead and refresh and we're going to go ahead and go back to our static website area here. And then we're going to go ahead and click this link. Go to that link and there we go. We see hello world in blue. So our CSS has been loaded and when we inspect, we should see hello world in the console and we do. So our JavaScript, our CSS and our HTML have all been loaded. Our static site is now successfully deployed. All right, thank you for watching, guys. I hope you appreciated this, uh, or I hope you enjoyed this video and appreciated this video. And if you guys have any comments or questions, please do leave those below. I'll ha be happy to answer them and help you guys get up and running with this, as this is a very fast, easy, and inexpensive way to deploy a static website. All right, guys, thanks again, and have a great day.